Spring started in Munich with the rumour of a fountain in town flowing free beer on the anniversary of the Reinheitsgebot, which is the German purity law from 1516. It was also the start of the festivals for the year, with the Frühlingsfest Spring Folk Festival, which is like a mini Oktoberfest for the people of Munich with beer and rides. The Street Life Festival is an amazing arts festival held occasionally throughout the spring and summer months in the streets of Munich. Free days were great to spend hiking in the Alps and getting away from the noise of the occasional protests in Munich. The political will of the people in Germany is, however, quite inspiring. After visiting my friend Leo in Nuremberg, we headed up together to his hometown of Erlangen to celebrate his and Miranda's birthday at Bergkirch Bay. A folk festival with approximately 1 million visitors each year, it is held in Europe's largest open air beer garden, located on top of a hill in a picturesque Bavarian town. The following day was spent recovering from the festival at a quiet lake in Nuremberg. Where are we? Isar! 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 And up there we have Grunewald. Beautiful the scenery. The Isar River flows down from the Alps and through Munich. It is a great region to explore by bike. For Miranda's surprise birthday getaway, I rented a car in Munich and without her knowing our destination, I drove her down through Austria and into the Dolomites, located in the north of Italy. We spent a few days exploring the area around Alpi di Suisi, aka the Sizer Arm. I could have spent a few months there in its picturesque magnificence if we had the time. Unfortunately, the day that we had set aside for our nine hour hike, the weather had turned on us. See, the thing about hiking is it's all about those views. Here we are up in the Dolomites. It's one of the most spectacular views in the world. And this is what we've got. Cloud, fog, mud, rain, thunder. Well, not yet. Hopefully not at all. How you going there, chicky pie? Where are we? After returning back, we took an excursion south of Munich to cycle a 47 km track around Lake Starnberg. A chance meeting with Harry Potter before the tourist season and World Cup madness hit. Celebrating some early wins for Mexico at a cantino with mi amigo de Mexico, Roberto. A good way to welcome the start of the summer madness.
After a trip to the Czech Republic, we returned and met up with one of my Czech friends, Pavel, to go on an epic hike near Olbersdorf. The hills were alive with whistling marmots and wildflowers. This is insanely disgusting. Help, please. Look at these shitty flowers. What a shit place Ew. to be in. Let's get past it real quick. We don't have to look at them anymore. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I had spent the previous winter living and working in the area. It was very different in the summertime. The hike was long, but the beauty was breathtaking. World Cup in the Summer Madness was in full swing in Munich, known locally as München, the city of monks. Live opera and classical musical performances, along with countless festivals and events like the Christopher Street Day LGBT Pride Parade. It wouldn't be summer in Munich without the spectacular Englischer Garden, the second largest city park in Europe and bigger than Central Park in New York, where quirky characters come out and there's always a party. It's also a great place to cool off in its streams or barks, fed from the Alps via the Isar River. A popular thing to do if you're ever in the city of Munich during the summer is the ice bark float in the Englischer Garden. Locals will jump into the stream to cool off, which is being pumped from the Isar River at such a speed that it has become a famous location for river surfers. The next step is to lie back and let the current take you. Quite often this is done with a beer in hand, of course. Then those who are brave enough will glide past the rapids. Beware of surfers here though. Once you float for another 10 minutes or so, you'll exit the English Gardens conveniently at a tram stop, which is then flooded with dripping wet swimmers who will make their two-stop journey back to the start to repeat the process all over again. The longest stream you can float on in the English Gardens in Munich is the Schwabinger Bark.
Once you get past the crowds and the sunbathing nudists, which are unfortunately primarily old men, the stream takes you to some peaceful and serene parts of the park, which stretches the length of its 370 hectares. Quite often on my work breaks in the summer, I would grab my inflatable tube and head for the stream. Sometimes I'd like to see how far I could get, which really depended on time and how far I was prepared to walk back. If you just let the stream take you, it can be an over an hour before you are back where you started. Great way to relax and escape right in the middle of a major city. Bavaria or Bayern is not only famous for its beer festivals and rolling hills, but also for its pristine lakes. Meeting up with my Czech friend Pavel, we visited my favourite Bavarian lake known as Ibsi. Crystal clear alpine waters, paddle boats and small islands to explore, Ibsi sits at the base of Germany's highest mountain known as the Zugspitze which separates the alpine border of Tyrol and Austria. Miranda and I had summited the Zugspitze the previous year. The end of summer I headed back to Oberstdorf to meet up with Pavel again. This time I brought my friend Felix for a two day hike in the Algoi Alpine region. We hiked from our base in Spielmannsau and up over the mountainous border into Austria. Keep going. It's straight ahead of you, I can see it. Yeah, you're going to start an avalanche. Along the way we pass small glaciers and wild mountain goats known as Steinbock. Watching the sun go down with a beer in our alpine mountain hut was the perfect way to say goodbye to these good friends. Returning back to Munich in time for the busiest time of the year, Oktoberfest. The world's largest folk festival began with a Bavarian royal wedding in 1810 and now attracts around 8 million visitors each year starting in the middle of September to the first Sunday in October.
The whole town comes to life during this time, with street performances, parades, and of course, the festival itself. Held at Theresian Visa, the same ground since its beginning, with 17 major beer tents and countless attractions. It was a great way to say our goodbyes to the close friends we had made during our time in Munich. And as the autumn leaves turned to gold, we left for the next stage in our adventure.